This is the new Nami Bernie 2 Max, the sequel to the most record-breaking scooter we've ever tested, the Nami Bernie. In this review, we've got the world's only head-to-head -head comparison data, including top speed runs and testing the new Logan brakes versus nut brakes, plus who it's for and who we think would be better off with something else. There are two versions, the base model Burn E2 and the Burn E2 Max. But like Ferrari, Nami really only makes one kind of scooter, the exotic kind. 100 pound beasts built for performance and ride quality with price and portability taking a back seat. The base model is less expensive with a smaller battery made from generic cells and a lower top speed, which we'll cover later. The Max, well, it's simply one of the highest performance electric scooters in the world. It's hard to believe it was just a year ago when Nami came out of nowhere it was suddenly one of the most talked about scooters on the planet, and then we tested it and found out why. The Bernie 2 Max remains the undisputed king of the ESG hill climb, tying the original Bernie's record of 6.3 seconds and cresting the hill at a terrifying 40 miles per hour. We were so inspired by the hill climbing of the original Bernie that we took it to the steepest hill in San Francisco and it conquered that too. Nothing climbs like a Nami. On the ESG range test course, the Bernie 2 Max covered 48 miles. Surprisingly, the base model Bernie 2 went 1.1 miles further, despite having a 12.5% smaller battery because it was just drawing less power. Here's an interesting quirk. All Bernie scooters are programmed to drop into eco mode at an annoyingly high 25% battery. This is to keep riders from accidentally running out of range. Fortunately, it's easy to set to any number you want. And for the range test, I set P13 to 0%, so I could stay in X mode with turbo engaged the whole time. The Bernie 2 Max showed no noticeable drop in power right up until the last 1.7 miles when top speed dropped to about 25 miles per hour and then slowed rapidly in the last quarter mile. The Max's ESG certified top speed is an eye-watering 54.9 miles per hour, though we saw speeds on the dash run as high as 59.6 during testing. So the Wolf King GT's record of 61 miles per hour remains unbroken. But while it's not the world's fastest, the Bernie 2 Max is the world's quickest production scooter from zero to 30, tying the record set one year ago by the original Burn E. Okay, before you start commenting, yes, there are some $10,000 built to order hyper scooters out there that might beat the Burn E from zero to 30, but strangely, they've never been willing to submit a scooter to us for testing. Also, you'd be riding your Nami for a good six months to a year before one of those other scooters that you paid in advance for would even show up. If you're interested in the Bernie 2 or the Max, we've got coupon codes for you down in the video's description. Using the links also helps us make more content like this. The four piston Logan brakes on the Max have bigger brake pads than the original Bernie E or the Bernie E2 and are hands down the best feeling brakes we've ever tested. The Max stops from 15 miles per hour in just 9.7 feet, half a foot shorter than the Bernie E with nut brakes. Regen is adjustable from zero to five, with five being the strongest, but even set to one, it feels a little abrupt, so we prefer setting it to zero. When you ask owners why they bought a Nami, many will say it wasn't range, top speed, or ride quality, but rather rockstar scooter designer Michael Schott, who's on social media daily, testing new prototypes and soliciting feedback directly from riders. Right out of the box, ride quality from the hydraulic shocks is among the very best, but it gets even better if you dial in the suspension for your weight and riding style. It's easy to do. We made a video about how to do it, and the tool you need comes with the scooter. Our test scooter came with noticeably less compression damping than the original Burn E, so larger riders may want to add more spring preload to help prevent it from bottoming out over jumps. Stability has been improved in two different ways. The bars are now 27 inches wide, two and a half inches wider than the original, and they've added a steering damper. Even with the changes, the Max still requires a very steady hand at top speed, unlike the King GT or Segway GT2. During high speed testing, the steering damper felt best set to its lowest resistance. This also reduces stress on the damper and makes it less likely to leak. For just riding around, I like the Bernie 2 Max better with no damper at all. The hand-welded cross-braced tubular frame feels absolutely solid around corners. And the carbon fiber stem isn't just for looks or weight savings, it helps keep road vibrations from reaching your hands, preventing hand fatigue on long rides. 
The deck is among the biggest and widest there is, which is handy since a wide stance makes it easier to keep your balance while you annihilate other scooters. The dash displays all the usual things, speedometer, battery level, and riding mode, and even has a USB port to charge your phone. It also displays some unusual things like motor temperature and it has an output current gauge, but I gladly give up the extra information at the bottom for a larger battery display, larger turn signal indicators, and a little more brightness. The five riding mode presets let you change the intensity of the NAMI's acceleration and regen braking on the fly without digging into the P settings. The presets can be edited and let you set acceleration to the front and rear wheels independently. For example, you could program one mode to send less power to the front wheel, preventing wheel spin when riding in dirt or rain. If you want maximum performance from your NAMI, there's one setting you need to change. Put it in X mode and then enable turbo mode by changing P1.7 from zero to five. Now turbo shows up in the top right corner, but you're still not in turbo mode. Hold the plus button for a couple seconds while your wheels are turning and you'll finally be in the absolute highest performance mode. Next time you want turbo, just repeat the last step and you're good to go. The sine wave motor controllers make the throttle so smooth that I can do maneuvers like this in X mode with turbo on the same settings I used for the top speed run. The Wolf King GT's sine wave controllers are similar, but definitely more abrupt. The NAMI's, the King GT, and every other scooter that uses this throttle have a dead zone at the beginning of travel. I just anchor my thumb on the housing and rock it into the throttle, so I have a reference point for where the dead zone ends. When the Bernie first came out, it suffered from a build quality issue that wasn't even part of the scooter. It was a box that seemed to be made out of recycled tissue paper. Some of the 2021 shipments, including ours, ended in tears. The scooters now come double boxed, and while no box is 100% FedEx proof, both our Burn E and Burn E2 Max arrived undamaged. Overall build quality is top shelf. The Burn E2 Max uses name brand battery cells from Panasonic, LG, or Samsung, which may have a slight edge in longevity over the generic cells used in the Burn E2 base model. It comes standard with a five amp fast charger. The sound of the fan lets you know it's charging, but it can get tiresome if you have to be in the room with it while it's charging. It uses a two pin connector, which is different from our Burn E and Burn E2. The backside of the ports also have improved protection from water. Fender protection is excellent and the scooter is rated IP55 with controllers, dash, and quick disconnects rated at IP67. The motor cable now has a quick disconnect, which comes in handy for tire changes, but you'll need to warm it up with a hairdryer to get it unplugged. The 11 inch tires are tubeless and look just like the flat proof CST brand tires on the King GT. But I peeked inside and they're the regular CSTs without the coating inside. Some NAMI owners have been upgrading to PMT tires for improved traction and smoothness at high speeds. Our Max didn't need it, but on our original NAMI, I was able to smooth out the ride by balancing the wheels. Best of all, the weights only cost 15 bucks. If enough people ask for it in the comments, we'll make a video on the easiest way to balance scooter wheels for high speed riding. The Bernie Max has a tested weight of 105.4 pounds, so it's not gonna fit in the trunk of your car or under your desk, and you wouldn't wanna carry this very far by yourself, but it does fit pretty easily in the back of an SUV. They didn't put folding handlebars on it because, I mean, that'd be like putting folding mirrors on a semi truck. It's just not gonna help. I still love the carbon fiber stem and the stainless steel stem latch because there's zero wobble at all. It does take a little while to unlatch it and fold it, but who cares? Cause you're not really gonna fold it anyway. Be careful not to tug on the brake line when folding it though, they really should make this longer. And the dash comes really close to the deck when you fold it. At normal speeds, the Bernie 2 Max is as safe as a beast scooter can be with a smooth throttle, excellent braking control, and a high mounted 2000 lumen headlight. These might be the coolest turn signals ever and now wrap all the way around the back of the scooter, but we wish they weren't blocked so much by the rear wheel and that the buttons were easier to use with gloves on. Being able to program your own rain mode enhances safety too. Pros include excellent ride quality thanks to the adjustable shocks, record setting acceleration, and it's one of the coolest scooters you can buy. Cons include dead space in throttle and stability at high speeds is still not the best. While you're doing your research, here are some other scooters with similar price and performance. NAMI Burn E2 Base Model. It might be the coolest thing you can buy for under $3,500. Exotic looks and ride quality at a lower price, but also lower top speed and generic battery. Wolf King GT Pro. Highest top speed and excellent stability, but 25 pounds heavier, complicated to fold, and the throttle isn't as smooth. Segway GT2. 
Excellent ergonomics and traction control make it easy to ride, but less customizable, less portable, and less range. Dualtron Thunder 2. 10 miles more range and higher top speed, but not as quick to 30 miles per hour and overall ride quality isn't quite as good. The Bernie 2 Max is not something I would recommend as a first scooter because of the power, the weight, and the price. But for those with the experience and the budget, it's the most exotic and possibly the best looking scooter out there that doesn't come with a five figure price tag. For me, the hard part would be choosing Burn E2 or Burn E2 Max. On one hand, I love paying less for stuff and I really wanna go faster than the Burn E2's 43.8 mile per hour top speed. On the other hand, I was just reading some comments from Max owners in the NAMI Facebook group and they made a good point. Getting the Max means you never have to wonder what life would have been like if you had just bought the fast one. If you like all the hands-on testing and detail in these videos, please support us by liking and subscribing, or let us know in the comments where we could have done better. And if you're interested in either the Bernie 2 or Bernie 2 Max, don't forget we've got coupon codes for you in the description and links to the best place to buy them. For more content on the NAMI Bernie, click this video. Or if you'd like to see some content about our other favorite beasts, click here.